What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Casually Fit Podcast. My name is Roberto, and this is episode 45. Thank you for coming by today. It is a good day. We are here on Wednesday. I cannot believe it is almost August. I had to double check this date. I was like setting something up, and it, was, it said for August, and I was like, oh, that's so far away. And I realized it's not far away at all. It's like three or four days away from now. So um, things are moving along real quick. And yeah, I hope everybody's having a good day. Today in the podcast, of course, going to go over a quote for you, get you motivated, get you looking a little different at your weight loss um, you know, path that you're on. Also going to go over you know, wh- how much exercise is really needed to lose weight, maintain weight, all that gonna show you fit fighter of the week fit freak and you know this is gonna be a nice quick compact episode uh, today um, but yeah let's let's just get right into it so first off let's start off with the quote now this quote is from a man from the late 1800s and I don't know if you'd call this man a Renaissance person but you know first and foremost he won the Nobel Peace Prize so that's pretty important, right? That's pretty legit. Uh, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He was a theologian, organist. He was actually really big into music. Um, but yeah, he was an organist. You know, that's uh, definitely a, a thing from <laughs> the 1800s. He was also super into religion. And if you know anything about, uh, you know, going to church and stuff like that, they there's like an organ in every church, I believe. Uh, but he was that. He was a musicologist, right? So whatever that means, but but he's super into music and he actually did some um, pretty wild things with that. He's also a writer, humanitarian, philosopher, and physician. And this guy, I mean, he, he's done it all and he uh, really dived into a lot of things. He has some wild ideas, uh, but he had this g- great quote. And the quote is, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is a key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. So first and foremost, I want to just, you know, in terms of losing weight, before I trash this, not I'm not going to completely trash it, right? But I am going to just shed some light on some things. But basically what he's trying to say in terms of weight loss um, how, how we can transfer this over is that, look, you shouldn't be angry when you're working out, right? You should try to be happy, which I'm going to get into in a second. That's like the, the gist of this um, entire quote. Now, there is some things that I have not really issues with, but things that should be kind of acknowledged, right? This dude was writing this back in the late, eight, in the late 1800s. Back then, success was very... It's, Typically, just talking about finances, talking about, you know, getting a promotion or something like that. And for a lot of people, they still think that that's the case. So a lot of people equate success in those two areas, money and promotions, where you work, all that. And that is true. But, you know, as the year is 2021 and we're, you know, steaming ahead towards the 2100s, um, I would say that success really is across the entire board now. Now success means that, okay, yeah, great, you have money, but are you a good dad, right? So you're not really successful if you have money, but you kick your kid in the face. Or something. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a drastic example. But you're not a good dad if you do that. You're not successful if you're doing those things. So now I think that it really encompasses everything so um so i just wanted to relay that over it's just like hey you know don't don't just think of success as a financial thing or a promotional thing um it it's really how you encompass everything a a balanced life which is really not a term i like using but a balanced life um is more what people are searching for nowadays right uh, and he also says, if you are love, if you love what you are doing, you will be successful. Now, yes, this is true, and I'm going to get into it in a second. But also, there's a little caveat to that. Uh, now, not everything should be tied up with money or anything like that. Um, however, 
I mean, if you – there's a guy. I watched uh, – it might have been on TLC or Discovery or one of these weird shows that tries to find the weirdest people out in the world, which is always very entertaining. But this show showed this man – who is this wasn't a child this was a grown man this man collected plastic chairs now i'm not talking about you know some really expensive really cool plastic chairs i, I could almost get on board with that like if you had like some crazy molded plastic chair that like vincent van gogh <laughs> molded or something like that or is recreated in that Im in, in an image from one of his paintings I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's, I mean, I could see somebody getting into that. But this person got into uh, collecting just regular old lawn chairs. Like, like if you go to a backyard barbecue, you will find some of his favorite pieces, any backyard barbecue. And so these things are like five, ten bucks, and he is happy doing that, right? He is very happy collecting these chairs. And you would say, well, this guy is successful. Well, you know, this guy had, I think, over a hundred some chairs stacked up into his like little tiny room in his either just he was either renting a room out from a larger home or he was um, uh, or he's still living in his parents place. I can't remember which one it is, but where he inhabited, where he slept at night, he surrounded himself with all these chairs. So, again, he is happy. But as far as like successful, he doesn't have a lot of the other things. So I, I feel like that is, you know, having the quote, if you love what you're doing, you will be successful. I think that can get kind of dangerous if you take it the wrong way. I don't know if dangerous is the right word, but it, it can get a little weird and you can really kind of waste your time. Right. Somebody should have told him, hey, you got to it's cool. You want to collect some chairs and I, I get that you're happy with it. But what else are you happy about doing? You know, let's let's try to find a couple other things to add on to this, uh, you know, plastic chair collection. So, so I just want to give that caveat. But other than that, you know, the main point, the reason why I chose this quote is because, look, you can lose weight and you can be angry and you can just drudge through the entire process and might work for you there's plenty of people who have lost weight and they're still trying to maintain that weight loss and they hate going to the gym every day to me that seems absolutely insane and crazy to to act actively hate something that you have to do every single day for like 60 minutes a day every single day for at least you know five to six days a week to lose weight uh to do that every single week, every single month, every year for multiple years and to wake up and, you know, just dread the workout and hate it. Like that seems unnecessary to me. That seems like somebody like you're being too closed off. Like I get it. If you first start working out and you hate it, of course, if you, if you got yourself into a position where you need to lose a bunch of weight, you probably don't like exercising and it's understandable, right? It's difficult. You get sweaty. It's all nasty. You got, you know, weird people in the gym. It's a whole deal. So I completely 100% get that when you for sure first start off. But I would say, I would suggest try to be somewhat happy. Try to look at the good things that come with working out. Uh, I mean, there's people who get, the quote unquote runner runners high right and that's like a very sought after thing but you really literally kind of get high when you run and there's like this thing it's called the uh endocannabinoids i wrote it down or i typed it out i can't find it right now it must be the sunglasses <laughs> but but basically we have these endocannabinoids um in our bodies right and you hear the word endocannabinoids you hear Canna, cannabinoids and that's actually sim similar to cannabis you know coincidentally isn't that crazy and this is the thing that they think kind of triggers and and gives you this high from exercising so that's a good thing right if you can just exercise and you can get a little high and it's all good it's all bueno I mean that's that's something to look forward to that's something that could be 
happy that that's something where you can find some happiness when you're working out so that's just one example you also have the the mental struggle the um you know just getting better at what you're doing as far as seeing where you uh, were when you first started and then where uh, you end up six months down the road you can look back at that progress and maybe you feel a little happy from it right maybe that your mental toughness from when you first began uh, pales in comparison to the mental toughness you have now well that should drive you to maybe be a little bit you know, more inclined to keep on working out and keep on working on that so that's the only reason why I'm bringing out this quote is because again I see so many people just you know trash working out and they hate working out until the end of time it's almost like their personality it's like something that they etched into their personality and they just go well this is just who I am I hate working out and again I get it but why would you, you you know our bodies we have to work out unfortunately if you work a job where you're sitting down every day there's no way about it unless you want to open yourself up to cardiovascular disease type 2 diabetes you know unless you want to open yourself up to all the negative aspects of a sedentary lifestyle if you don't want to fall into that then you have to exercise you have to act and I'm going to get into how much we have to exercise here in a little bit but again if we have to exercise every single day or you know five days a week why why hate it right like I think anybody who hates exercising right now again if you're first you know beginning I get it you're gonna have you're gonna be listening to this like I'm insane like what's this guy talking about I'm never gonna like exercising and hey maybe you don't ever like exercising but I think that's more of a you thing than anything that doesn't really say anything about exercising that says uh, more about you and I think that if you know if you if we have to do this try to find happiness in it because if you show up to exercising working out doing the thing that you have to do every day then and and you're trying to be happy and you actually are happy over time right you know the first day you go in you're like I'm gonna be happy today you're probably not gonna be happy that day you're gonna you're gonna think that you're gonna be happy and then all of a sudden whatever happens you drop a weight you don't lift as much as you want you don't run as far as you thought you could all of a sudden you're sad and then the next day hopefully you say to yourself you know what today I'm gonna be happy and then that's the day that maybe you are happy and then you just go through that whole entire process and you know go through the ups and downs but the happiness is there and the happiness should be sought after for sure because it's just going to make it more an enjoyable experience it's going to make it easier to exercise I mean instead of like if somebody has their which I think this is a poor decision especially if you're working out or trying to lose weight if you place your ex your workout at the end of the day uh, and you hate exercising what are you more than likely intermittently thinking about throughout the entire day how much you don't want to go to the gym later and you have to spend however long you you know you're you're up in your mind thinking about that and that's just wasted time that's just negative energy that you know nobody really wants to live with and again if you're working out every day you're doing that every day every single day you're just waking up and if you think about working out working out you're like damn I gotta wait or I gotta work out today I don't want to do that and you just go down this little negative Nancy <laughs> like you know mindset and it's just not it's not gonna help you out right it's it's only gonna make things more difficult and it's already so difficult to lose weight so I just think that's that's just such a completely unnecessary way to go about trying to lose weight uh, so if that is you right I, I might have exposed you you might feel exposed you might feel seen right now and for that I partly apologize for jumping this on you but also it's all good right who cares like who cares if you you realize now oh maybe I should um, start trying to be happy well that's the good thing that's what I'm trying to do is to hopefully drive you to be like well maybe you know there are things that I can be happy about while I'm trying to exercise and then that can translate into 
just a happier, you know, mindset going around this whole entire thing. And I think that can spread out into all the areas like dieting and all of that. So so then it just makes it a bit easier for you. Okay. And I'm not the easy person. I'm not trying to make everything easy for people, but having a more fluid, um, positive relationship with exercising and dieting, I mean, there can only be good from that, right? Um, but again, I just see so many people just absolutely hate it and they they despise it and you know and then they wonder why it's so difficult to stick with the workout program like if i hated to do something every single day um unless it had a great benefit for me that i actually knew i mean i'm I'm not gonna stick around with it for too long and for a lot of people who are trying to lose weight yeah they know that they're supposed to be losing weight that they need to lose weight but as far as fully understanding the, the, the impact of it, if they stick with it and what can be of them a few years down the road, that's not really something tangible a lot of people kind of feel and see uh, in the beginning. So then when you're going through the difficult process of exercising along with having all these negative thoughts about it, it's like, yeah, of course, you're going to stop doing it. So hopefully, again, maybe you go to this quote, you don't go to this quote, or you just take away that, hey, stop being angry, right? But again, a great quote. Oh, Albert Schweitzer, he was also a polymath, right? This dude was smart. And again, he came up with the quote, success is not the key to happiness, right? Success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you're doing, you will be successful. And again, this goes, you can go, you can take this quote, you can go deep with it, you can go in many different directions uh, with this, right? Um, but again, I, I understand it's a hard thing to try to convince somebody who absolutely doesn't like exercising, like, hey, maybe you should try to like it. But that is exactly what you need to do. Hey, maybe you should try to like it, right? It's It can only help you out and... You, you don't have to always dislike it. You, there's nothing, you're not required to always despise it. Yeah, it's fun to talk about. It's fun to shit on. It's fun to, you know, dwell in the, um, dwell in the pity of it or whatever. Uh, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, try to be happy. And it's not the cool thing to say, I guess, is what I'm getting at. But it is something that does make things a lot easier. So take that quote in stride. Listen to Albert Schweitzer. Don't look into too much of his stuff. Um, I won't even get into it. <laughs> he might be problematic, but he's also not problematic at the same time. I did look into a little bit. So, um, But he is an interesting guy to look up because, again, he, he was a part of a lot of different things and brought about a lot of different change. Now, let's get into the fit fighter of the week. Somebody who has lost 40 pounds. She is a mom of trace, mom of three, right? And she lost 40 pounds. That's pretty insane. Her name is jo Johanna Leek or Joanna. Johanna or Joanna Leek. And you can go to Transformation Jojo on Instagram. Everything is linked down in the description box for everybody. And if you're watching the podcast, as Lost you can see, 40 pounds, she right is here. a mom you know, she of was, She's trace. not somebody who was, you know, three, right? vastly overweight or anything like that, but pretty insane. You know, her name is Jo. She's jo definitely in the Hanna overweight category, Leek which many people Joanna, find themselves Joanna today or Joanna is in that Leek. category. And, and again, go she's a great follow because JoJo, she did it. I she lost the and down and she's in the she's keeping it off for everybody um, by saying, and watching the podcast, right, you see her as the, you can see, in the gym the right transformations here. right here. She's killing it. You know, she she's uh, not somebody who so was, go give her you know, a follow again. Vastly overweight or give you, like that. Uh, but links you know, to these people. It's just so hopefully in the overweight category, which many people find themselves today. You can get some inspiration category. Maybe and you again, make she's a, a great follow because internet friend. She did it. She know. lost the forty plus. Well, let's pounds. move on. And she's right? keeping so that's the fit fighter of the week. Um, by congratulations sick. to uh, Mrs. Leak or Miss Leak. Uh, let's get into now. Sorry, yeah. Like I said, we're 
moving through this podcast today. The reason why we're moving through the podcast today, right now, everything's cool, right? I, right now, I feel pretty good. I feel normal right now. But right up until I started recording this podcast, I don't know what happened. I think it has some has something to do with sweating and being being in the sauna, but like up inside my nose. I don't know if it's like an infection or whatever, but it's just like this burning, like just you know this so you know the pain is so high that's the only thing that I can concentrate on when you have this like burning sensation in your nose, and it's been there for a couple days, and I think it is just because of um, I think. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was in the sauna, and I realized I wasn't taking, like, deep breaths through my nose. And I, I normally always breathe through my nose, but I realized I wasn't taking these deep breaths through my nose. And I started doing it, and I started feeling this burning sensation in my nose. I'm like, oh, well, this is just something I got to get used to because I haven't been doing it. But I think that added in with the sweat that drips off and, you know, just all that salt and then surfing all the salt from the ocean. I think all of that combined to like giving me some sort of like sinus infection, which has been pretty much unbearable for the past like 24 to 48 hours. Uh, but I shoved Sudafed in my mouth and some ibuprofen, which I'd never take stuff like that, um, but it worked. So I feel fine now, but I am trying to cruise through this. Uh, because I know the pain is just around the corner, <laughs> but but either way, so let me talk about uh, how much exercise you need to do, and it even hurts to even touch my nose. It's such a pain in the ass. Uh, but yeah, so how much exercise do you need? Now, this all, everything I'm going to talk about right now is all going to be very general, right? If I don't know your weight, I don't know what you're eating, I don't know any of that. OK, um, and I will say that exercising is very important for many reasons, you know, to stave off certain diseases, to strengthen your bones so you can kind of push yourself away from osteoporosis, you know, the weakening of the bones. You don't want that. So strength exercises help with that. You want to have a healthy cardiovascular system. You want to be able to breathe easy um, and you want to combat the sedentary lifestyle that we've all come accustomed to right uh, so there's many benefits to exercising and uh, and in terms of losing weight I would say exercising is it's a requirement for sure but if you were to look at how important it is it's still very important but in terms of losing weight your diet is really going to be the big thing that that um, that's, that's going to be taking the big chunks out of everything like if you can get your diet down change out the unhealthy food for healthy food lower your calories get yourself in a caloric deficit i mean that's going to be the real driving factor okay and exercise is also going to aid in that to kind of boost up the amount of calories that you burn every single day to help you get into that caloric deficit and it is going to strengthen your body and it is going to uh, stress your system um, to the degree that we actually need it. Our bodies require some sort of stress. So, um, so yeah, I will say in terms of losing weight, again, you, you need to do the dieting and the exercising, but I'm not going to sit here and say that exercising is the end all be all thing. That's going to 100%, you know, going to fix your, fix your weight, right? You also, you need to, you need to pay very close attention to your diet and these the dieting and exercising these two need to be very important to you um but as far as you know losing weight or as far as being sedentary like how much exercise do we need well if we rewind the clock a little bit we go back to the 1900s you know things are a little bit dirtier people are working a lot more uh, we got a couple wars coming up you know, there's, <laughs> I don't know, did they have muskets back then? I can't remember. Muskets are like 1700s, I think. But everything's pretty slow back then. There's no internet. There's no smartphones. <laughs> there's, what's in the early 1900s? Not much at all. What are people doing, though? Most people are moving around every single day. There's a lot of labor work from back in the day. I think there's like a, 
a stat that was like 40 to 60 percent somewhere around there 40 to 60 percent i believe uh of all work of all workers back then were was um like hard laborers like labor workers and now that stat has pretty much flipped around and and then there's only like you know 10 to 20 percent of people who are like sitting at desks or just doing things from one specific position without having to use their muscles it's more of a mental thing um and now that's kind of flipped around there's not too many people doing some hard labor and everything is very easy to sit and chill and not do anything uh y if you have a job more than likely you're working at a desk or maybe even you're just you're a cashier at some place uh, you're either sitting or standing in one specific spot for eight hours of your day and then you throw in driving time in there you throw in uh chilling watching some tv hanging out you know with your your girlfriend boyfriend whatever it is and you know that that adds into how much exercise you need to do okay like the person from the 1900s these what i'm going to give you right now they might not have to do as much they probably have to do about this much but for for many of the people they were already doing hard labor at their work and then life was just difficult back then there wasn't really much chilling hanging out like they're they're out doing things they're out making things happen they're out getting things there's not not everybody had cars not everybody was able to jump on a plane and go do these things so uh, they they didn't have walmarts where they could just go to one specific place to get everything cheaply made um so so their guidelines are a little bit different from ours ours are clearly higher they have to be higher if you look at your life and you realize hey i'm not moving around that much uh you got to exercise a lot and the numbers i'm gonna say they might shock a lot of people uh because the weird thing is is that um when i was growing up like uh exercising wasn't nobody told me hey you need to exercise maybe that's because i was exercising already like i was running at a very young age and lifting weights at a very young age um but but as far as everybody else the general consensus for everybody else that i was around uh there's no push to exercise there's no people might every now and then say hey you know everybody should kind of maybe exercise but for sure not i mean the amount of gyms compared to i would like to know that stat the amount of gyms that were open in the mid 1990s compared to the amount of gyms that are open before covid not not after covid um it has to be exponentially higher because it just wasn't it was like a thing that if you are into health and fitness you already knew about but as far as like the general public who's just trying to work their eight hour job, make some money, be with their family, be with their loved ones, you know, hang out, do all that stuff. There's no push to there wasn't any like, hey, you know, that's all cool, but you also need to exercise. It hasn't been a thing. And so a lot of people, I, I know a lot of people who still think it's not a thing. It's, it's kind of wild. Um, but it that's the thing it's like a, a lot of people don't really understand um or just don't pay attention to our bodies and how they work and how humans have to have some sort of activity otherwise uh just um, just illnesses come after that diseases come from it again osteoporosis cardiovascular disease heart failure type 2 diabetes i mean and the list goes on right so and that's all from lack it's not all gotta you know be careful with this but it's not all from that but a lot of it is from sedentary lifestyle so so what you know one of the recommendations right for i would say if you are just at a healthy weight already and maybe you just don't have much muscle mass you just haven't really exercised too much but you stay at a relatively healthy weight and you're just wondering because you can still be just because you know you uh are at a healthy weight doesn't mean everything's good again the system within 
still needs to be stressed out a little bit. You can be at a healthy weight and still have weak, brittle bones because you're not stressing out the bones, right? So, so that could be an issue. Now, if that's you, right, you're just trying to maintain a healthy weight, you're already at a healthy weight, about 30 minutes a day is probably going to be decent for you, right? That's pretty low on the, uh, on the energy expenditure kind of um, thing, but uh, that that's going to be about like that's a regular guideline from like the CDC, WHO, Mayo Clinic says this as well. Uh, there's a bunch of people that pretty much stick around this. Everybody should work out about 30 minutes a day, about five days a week. That's like the lowest estimate people want or um, all these higher figures like the WHO, CDC, Many fitness people say, hey, you should be working out 30, 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Again, that, that really only leaves room for 30 minutes of cardio. And really, that's kind of it. 30 minutes of cardio or 30 minutes of weightlifting. Um, again, if you're already staying at a healthy weight from not really doing too much exercising, you know, there's not really too much motivation to do more than that. I would suggest doing more than that, but... As far as what they say, it's about 30 minutes. My, I'm going to give my general guideline at the end, but that's if you're at a healthy weight trying to maintain that. Now, what if you're trying to lose weight, right? Well, they did a study, and I have it right here. Uh, these people lost 30 to 50 pounds, and they had not regained it after several years. Now, these were self-reported studies, and they showed that these people, right, so they lost 30 to 50 pounds, and they did not regain it. So they were able to lose weight. We, we should want to know what they were doing in terms of exercising. And what they were doing was exercising 60 to 90 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity per day, right? So that's, I think that's, um, it says per day. You could take that as seven days a week, but I believe it's just six days a week, five to six days a week. But that's a big jump from 30 minutes a day. But it makes sense because, look, if you got to lose weight, hold on, I'm getting hot in here. The sweatshirt was cool when I was cold, but now I'm hot. All right, so these lights, they're shining down on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you are in that overweight, obese category, you got to kind of move things around a little bit more, right? You have more weight to lose. Uh, you also have the diet to kind of wrangle in. So you need to be focusing on 60 to 90 minutes of exercising. <sighs> Wait for it. Six days a week. <laughs> I know. It's insane. A lot of people, I mean, that's a lot of exercising. That's a lot that's a lot of exercising. And that's really why a lot of people haven't been kind of preaching it. It's kind of hard because a lot of people who are trying to help people lose weight, they're also trying to help themselves by selling these people trying to lose weight, some sort of workout program, some something to help them do it. And what a lot of people realize real quick is that it's easier to sell a weight loss program that promotes everything as being easy, simple, short duration, all that stuff. So you're not really going to hear, and we haven't really heard too many people say that people should be working out 60 to 90 minutes a day, six days a week. That's insane. It's not insane, but I mean, that's, that's insane in terms of what we were told in the nineties, right? That's, that's much higher. So, so that's how a lot of these programs kind of come about where, they just go, oh, you can do 20 minutes here. You can. I saw workouts that you can do on the couch. There's like a whole YouTube like lane of people showing you how to work out on the couch. And hey, if that's the first starter, if that's the first mover to get you up and get you going, and then that leads to the 60 to 90 minutes of moderate intensity exercise, I'm all for it. But don't fool yourself thinking that doing that every single day is going to be the thing that helps you lose weight. It's just not enough. So that's how much people should be shooting for if you're overweight, obese, you got to lose weight and you want to maintain it. So that means you got to 
exercise 60 to 90 minutes on the journey to lose weight and then you got to maintain that for it a little bit afterwards as well now um there was another one and and i will say this does vary so this what i just told you was a study they i wish i put down how many people they focused on um but i, f I believe it was a couple hundred people or more um, or is a meta-analysis of a bunch of different studies put together. Um, but this is like science. There's no, like, this is them going in, you know, weighing these people, seeing what they're doing for exercise, tracking it, and then coming up with an average. And the average is about 60 to 90 minutes. Um, and then there's also, like, you know, some people, even the, I believe I found this on CDC or WHO, even for overweight or obese adults, they say to work out 30 minutes a day, moderate intensity exercise for five or more days a week. So that's where it gets a little weird because it's they, they kind of keep the same guideline whether you're a healthy weight or you're obese. They do say maybe you should work out more, but they're not really getting to the, the, the hard thing to say, which is maybe you need to be working out two to three times more than what the average person is doing. And that's just the unfortunate truth about it. Um, so there is varying um, opinions on this. I'm a, I like the data. I like studies. I, li I don't like opinions, really, um, unless it's an opinion from somebody that's very uh, like an expert in a certain area and has a good reputation. Um, but I, I like studies. So the 60 to 90 minutes is great. Now, I put out, or I didn't put... Well, I do have this on my website. I got workout programs on my website. You want to check it out. It's called the First Step Program. It's for people who are just cruising in. They're trying to take the first step. And it's it's just a building up process workout program. And um, and this doesn't cover every this doesn't cover at all what the workout program that I have on my website is. Uh, but this is just like a short kind of thing. Kind I want to give people a guideline of what you can kind of do every single day so if you're asking yourself well what am i supposed to do for 60 to 90 minutes how am i going to fill my workout well like how am i going to exercise for 60 to 90 minutes what's i mean it's gonna i mean if you don't normally work out you can be kind of confused on the whole thing so and that's where you can switch online you can go online and find different exercises but as far as like the bulk of it this is how if you're trying to do like a balanced workout, right? If you're trying to do a balanced workout that involves cardio and involves core exercises and involves weightlifting, all that, warming up, this is what I would suggest, right? Um, first off, start off your workout. I think everybody should start off their workout on the elliptical or on a stationary bike or walking on the treadmill for 10 minutes. Just cruise on that thing. And uh, don't put it at the lowest level. Don't put it at the highest level. Kind of, kind of cruise around the medium, medium level. You're not looking to put out, right? You're just looking to get your body moving. You're trying to get the blood flowing. Maybe build up a slight sweat, right? You're not trying to kill yourself in ten minutes. But I think that's I. I started implementing this in my workout, you know, a year or so ago, and I absolutely love it 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 has um helped me kind of stay away from a lot of different injuries i believe it helps me lift more weight because i'm more fresh and as for and again as far as staying away from injuries just having a warmer body um and then you know for me i'm picking up you know 90 pound dumbbells and things like that so having a little bit more fluidity in my body when i do that not having it be so stiff it, it really helps out with that so start your 90 minute workout with a 10 minute warm-up again cruise on the elliptical stationary bike walk on a treadmill just cruise there get your mind right you know just kind of focus on your breathing build up that a little bit of sweat and just get ready for the workout that's coming next up hit up 30 minutes of weightlifting so this is where you gotta you know create your own program go into you know get somebody else's program you can build I'm, I'm all for people building their own program there's so much information online people could do it uh, but like an example for 30 minutes of weightlifting would be you can specifically choose like um, 
like one specific muscle group. Like maybe you just want to work out chest for that day. And it's going to vary for, you know, but let's say you're just going to work out chest for that day or, or a back. We'll say back. So let's say you're going to work out back. This is gender neutral. Okay. <laughs> um, let's say you're going to work out your back. You, you, you either want to tone your back. You want to build some muscle, whatever it is. If you want to work out your back for 30 minutes, um, try to shove in anywhere from three to six different types of exercises, right? It all depends on how much rest you're taking. If you're first starting off, you're probably going to be taking a little bit longer in between sets and that's fine. Um, that's why I leave the gap from three to six workouts, but just go in there, pick three to six workouts specifically for your back. You know, you got the lat pull downs, maybe wide grip. You got a row machine or you got, um, you got, yeah, you got a uh, dumbbell rows. Uh, maybe you have some sort of reverse fly something like that. Right. And you do about three to four sets and that's what you do for that 30 minutes. So that's going to be great. That's going to be something that strengthens your bones. That's going to give your body the resistance that you want to stress the system. And, you know, it's going to help, um, help you tone up if you're looking to tone up. Right. So that's great. After that, this is where it gets a little difficult. After that, you got to jump in, you got to do a little bit of cardio and you got to do about 40 minutes of cardio. So that's where elliptical, if you're first starting off, no shame, jump on that elliptical, jump on the stationary bike, jump on something that's easy on the joints, easy on the system. And that is the elliptical. And that is a stationary bike. Jump on that thing. You, you can start off at a low level. Doesn't matter, but just jump on there for 40 minutes. And then within that 40 minutes, start building up, you know, start ramping up the intensity, maybe move to the treadmill at some point, begin jogging, begin running, doing that. So that that's going to be the next, that's going to be the third section of your workout. So first off, 10 minute warm up, second, 30 minutes of weightlifting, third, 40 minutes of cardio, and then end it off with 10 minutes of some sort of core exercises. And then that 10 minutes, you can just do some sort of circuit a few times. You can pinpoint a couple different things like crunches, maybe some lunges, just something that works your core more, maybe some flutter kicks. And you just kind of round robin this a few times and you run through it and you do that for 10 minutes. And that's a balanced workout for 90 minutes. And that's going to give you, again, you're going to work the cardio. You're going to work the stress on your system by lifting weights and you're going to work your core. What else do you want? You know, I would also interject stretching on top of that as well. But that's that. And then, you know, you got a cardio day. I was I was going to get into this, but anything other than that, you just move around the numbers. Maybe some days you take a light day and you X out the 30 minutes of weightlifting and you just do 40 minutes of cardio or just 20 minutes of cardio. Right. And then 10 minutes of core. I mean, you can really just move this whole thing around so many different ways. Um, to whatever you feel like you want to do. But again, if you're not really familiar with what's necessary to exercise the system and stress the system enough, I would revert to finding some sort of workout program. Um, but again, you can definitely do this all on your own, which is why I'm giving you, I would say to follow the balance workout that I just went over, just fill in, in the weightlifting, different exercises, and then just pick a machine, elliptical, stationary bike, um, or, or the treadmill for the cardio, or maybe even the Stairmaster for the cardio. And then just find, you know, three to five core exercises that you can do for just 10 minutes after you get done with your 40 minutes of cardio, or you can put the cardio before, or you can put the core exercises, sorry, before the cardio. Um, you can just really move this thing around, but that's, you know, if you're looking to lose weight, they're telling you, hey, 60 to 90 minutes. And I, you know, I can guarantee you pretty much if you're in the caloric deficit, you're eating healthy and you're doing this balanced work, workout that I just showed you. Um, I mean, it's only going to help you out. There's almost, I mean, it's very hard for you to not lose weight over a period of time. So definitely check that out. If you're wondering how much you should be working out, if you thought your 20 minutes of exercising was enough, it's not. 
unless you're kind of at a healthy weight already and you already have some sort of labor job, something like that. And again, all of these numbers, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're at a somewhat healthy weight now, right. But you just started a job not too long ago of you sitting down the whole entire day. And then the other parts of your day, a lot of it, you're sitting down as well. That 30 minute recommendation, five days a week, you're going to realize that that's not going to be enough. And that's where you're going to be in that 60 minute kind of range. Um, but that is what it is, right? We are pretty much required to work out about 60 minutes a day, five plus days a week. There is no getting around. I mean, there is getting around it. You cannot do that, right? And I think the stat on that is if you don't do that, there's like a 20 to 30% greater chance of you dying early you know and then you have all the other diseases that come with it and and then the quality of life your life is not going to be too joyful you know um over several years and decades of not doing it and i've seen it firsthand i've seen exactly what the life what someone's life becomes when you're not doing those things and 100 percent, it sucks i talk to any of them it is horrible it sucks and you you don't want to end it out that way so you know no matter what your age is the great thing about the body the human body is that it, it adapts to whatever situation right it doesn't adapt well to sedentary behavior i'll tell you it our bodies do not like that at all but as far as going from sedentary to active the body adapts because it likes it it wants it so no matter your situation there is light at the end of the tunnel you know no matter your age you can get in there you can start working at these things they might be at a lower level in comparison to all the other people in the gym but that's all that doesn't matter at one point any you you look around the gym and you pick any you close your eyes you point your finger at any person in the gym and you will you can rewind their life back to where they're in a similar position that you were in. So it's the same thing for everybody. You just got to get in there, start doing it, and start doing more. So if you've been slacking off a little bit, maybe you just thought you were doing enough, you probably should be doing more. Especially if you're, you know, if you're if you have been exercising and you have been dieting and you find 6 months later you're not losing weight, Nine times out of 10, that's because you're not exercising enough and maybe you're not actually paying attention to your diet enough, right? One of those two things is off and you really got to scrutinize one of those two things. And it is difficult to do it because then you have to come to the conclusion that, hey, maybe I was wrong about something. And we all know not too many people like doing that. Um, but yeah, so that is a fitness tip this week. Um let me show you. Let's end it off with the fit freak of the week. This person is Millie Movement. She is a fitness trainer, coach for F45 training, Y Belly Fitness, whatever that is. But she is a fit freak. As you can see, well, you can't really see because my computer is frozen. So that's how that's <laughs> that's how the episode is ending. Go to Millie Movement at Instagram. Again, she loves the kettlebells. Many of the like like the fittest people out there now, most of them are using kettlebells. It's for whatever reason there's a correlation with kettlebell exercises and just a very healthy active lifestyle. I think it is in part because kettlebell exercises are are a bit more functional than say like a bench press. Right, they're a bit more useful to focus your time on it's kettlebell exercises than like say bench pressing so that's definitely why and if somebody sees that functional fitness is better for the overall health than bench pressing then that leads to a bunch of other inquire inquiries of well what else is better you know not carb loading is better right the whole body i will rip on bodybuilding and the old gym ways is any chance I get that old carb loading, shoving your face with Snickers, um, bulking up during the winter. Uh, I mean, 
not doing any cardio, just trying to lift as much weight as possible, uh, injecting yourself with as many substances as you can, that is just not the healthy way. I mean, and, and the science proves it. That's just not the healthy way. And uh, thankfully, we're all becoming aware of more healthier ways to live. I wish this thing wasn't frozen. Here's a video. There she goes. So, yeah, you see her swinging some kettlebells. She gets it. You get it. You get the point, right? Let's get out of here, right? I'm getting hot. And the computer's frozen. It's making me angry, right? Um, but, yeah, I appreciate you coming by for this episode. Sorry if I just kind of ran through it. Um, again, my, I mean, the ibuprofen is really kicking in right now. And it's making me hot. But I have no pain in my nose, which is great. But I'm not, I don't take anything ever. So I don't really handle this stuff quite well whenever I do put some random stuff in my system. Uh, so I'm out of here, okay? <laughs> I'm out of here this week. Uh, next week, I will be back hopefully 100%. And we can get into some more stuff. You know, we can talk about some more stuff about fitness. Uh, for sure, leave a comment if you have any questions, maybe any topics, something that you want me to go over um yeah just let me know what's up appreciate anybody who's watching and um enjoy the rest of your week <laughs>